more and more your consumers online, if you don't know how to relate to them, to work with them and to sell them online, your competition who does, maybe who is offline, who, who's good at both, they're gonna outsell you. Welcome to Monday Mornings with Michelle, the new business podcast. Whether you're kicking off your day or kickstarting your business, Michelle is going to kick your ass into next week with the essential fours. Strategy, systems, support, and state of mind. Now, welcome to center stage, Michelle Nedelec. Hey there, peeps. This is Michelle Nedelec, and I'm super glad that you're here with us today because I'm here with my most amazing guest, John. John, thank you so much for being with us here today. You as well. I appreciate it. I appreciate your time. Awesome. So give everybody the 5,000 foot view of who you are and what you do. So I, I get asked this in many different ways you can answer. That can go really deep or just, just on the bridge. So just, just a little surface. Give us a teaser. A little, a little service teaser. So one, I'm someone who truly cares about people, whether it's business or just friendships or, or family. And I really love working with people, genuinely have a huge interest in just helping and giving to people. And then as well on the business side, I focus mainly on growth consulting. So how to optimize a business or optimize, again, an offline business or a digital business to make them way more profitable, improve conversions, and do a few other little hacks that make them much, much more money. Yay, we like making more money. Awesome. So let's back up the bus for a little bit. And how did you get into this, optimizing businesses? Oh, I got started really young, around 13 years old. I'm a second generation digital marketer. You don't hear that very often. My dad uh, moved our family out of welfare, welfare housing. Our family went through, he had two offline businesses that went bankrupt. We lost everything. Turned to online marketing. Yeah, got our family out of it. I being really young, I'm like, hey, if my dad can do this. I can do this. I got started blogging. A couple of years went by. Got started uh more in affiliate marketing around 15, 16, started making money with it. Okay, I can make money with this. I said, screw college. I'm just going to go full on business. And then ever since then, the only job I worked was at Walmart for about six months. Thanks, Walmart, for the couple grand to get started. And then <laughs> everybody's celebrating Walmart. <laughs> that's a good celebration. Like, hey, hey. Um, yeah, that's how I kind of got my start. And then ever since kind of 15, 16, it's all I've done. And success has kind of just grown and grown and grown. And I'm uh, moved into kind of consulting, growth consulting, and kind of continuing down that path. Nice. I love it. So what kind of digital marketing? Because there is a ton of them out there and it can be, you know, niched in or just in the business realm. What do you, who do you right. love to serve and support? So mainly, I think I'm probably really good at the best at email marketing because one, so few businesses follow up and two, those who do follow up don't do it right. They don't follow up in the variety of ways from a variety of sources. They also um, just don't do it enough. Almost every consulting call I get on, you know, I talk to the email list. They're like, well, last month, once. And it's like people don't realize that with advertising, running ads, or even doing organic, the majority of leads you collect aren't going to pay you right away. So follow-up is where literally 95% of your profit and money is going to come from. So email marketing, especially, um, I'm pretty decent at sales too, but email marketing for sure. And then also just optimizing the sales process, because again, people often have a variety of product and services they're selling, but they don't have any uh, one-click order bumps. They don't have uh, an actual upsell or downsell process. That's five, six, seven products long. There's a lot they're missing. And I start nerding out and getting excited because when I work with businesses, there's so much they have to fix. I'm frustrated for them, but I know I can also help guide them and make them a lot more money. Nice. I love it. So I'm going, we can take this so many places, but let's start with the six or seven upsells, downsells, cross sells. Uh, first off, explain anybody that's listening might not know what an upsell, downsell, cross sell is, and then um, how did we create them? And we'll go into that conversation. For sure. So basically an upsell, downsell, or cross-sell is simply selling another related product or service to your customer. Because often, of course, number one, you need to serve your customer as much as you can. You do that with your product and services. Number two, you also want to collect as much money as you can as a business. Because then it get more profits and getting more profits helps you do a lot. So what you want to do is basically in any sales process, whether it's offline or online again, 
is you want to make it so you have an actual process that a customer goes through that offers them these different products and services. So online, that would look like, say for example, you're selling t-shirts and someone buys your t-shirt. Well, do you send them directly to a thank you page to confirm their order? Or do you send them to a page that is a thank you page maybe? And it also says, hey, get five more t-shirts at a discount, that's an upsell, getting them to buy more. And then if they say no to that, do you downsell them saying, no, thank you. I just want to uh, claim my thing, claim my t-shirt I bought. You could go, well, we do have some, uh, you know, like wristbands for a really cheap price you can grab that are similar to the t-shirt you just bought. You know, you can have a variety of different products and services to offer. And what that does is it maximizes how much money you generate because, for example, I, I self-published two books. I made a huge mistake. Uh, in the first book, I just had just the book I was selling, right? The second book, I was selling the digital book, but with one-click order bump. One-click order bumps are magic because... The order bump was three times the cost of my book. It was $37 and the cost of my book was $9. By clicking on the uh, order bump, it, it essentially, if 100% of the people bought the order bump, that would four times my profit. Well, 50% of every person who bought the book bought that. So I got about a two times ROI increase immediately just off a little order bump. Uh, if you want help on how to implement those, you should make sure this, that you have a good CRM or page builder that allows you to incorporate border bumps, upsells, downsells, all those different things, because they are huge for increasing revenue. Um, because again, when you're getting your customers to buy, most of them aren't going to buy right away. But when you get the ones who are buying right away, you want them to buy as much as possible because they don't always return. So you want to take as much money as you can from them, but also deliver as much value and service to them. Awesome. So does this work in services as well as retail or where do you see the most kind of um, response to the order bumps? Right. So most of the most response usually comes from physical products because there's so much you can do with offering bundles, deals, uh, multiple of items, different things like that. But you can do it in services and even in B2B. For example, uh, I talked with an ad agency, Hosky Media. Uh, shout out to Antonio, who's the CEO of that company. They do great ad creatives. And they were kind of working out, you know, how can we increase uh, how much we're generating for a lifetime value per customer? Just basically how much you're making per customer over the value of them buying from you for their entirety. And because he adds, has ads creatives and there's many agencies that just kind of have their one main thing they're offering. Ads, it could be follow-up management, it could be sales process management, you name it, PR. And I'm like, well, you could also offer, since you know about how to operate and scale a business, you could offer consulting as a service, which would increase, uh, for example, an agency's ROI per customer by thousands of dollars per month. Uh, you could also offer, you know, an extended, an extended, you know, sometimes agencies charge per month. You could charge a discount and extended by contract a year for X amount of dollars. And the reason you would do that, for example, is if you know your average customer stays with you for four months, but you get them locked down for a 10 month contract, you will get a discount from them, but you will make sure you guaranteed collect more money upfront from them. Um, so it works best in the kind of physical world, the physical products, but digital and also B2B and services also can work very well. It's just, you have to be creative in how you structure I nice, love it. So when we're talking, when you're talking to most businesses, do they already have a retail outlet or are they going, Hey, I think I got to do something online. <laughs> I think I'll start a Amazon company. I don't know. Like right. Right. I think it's usually 70, 30. There's a lot of offline businesses, especially kind of like in my local town I, I talk with. And I see that they are online. They're mainly, they're mainly offline, but they're barely online and they're basically doing nothing. Uh, they have no follow-up. They don't really have an online sales process. They don't have any upsells, downsells, et cetera, of any kind. They do a little bit of uh, online advertising for their local They are nothing crazy. And for them, it's really realizing any offline business that you need to get online because online and digital is where the entire world is headed. No, we can talk about, you know, not even including crypto alone, which is debatable. There's many things that could be debated about it, but not even talking crypto alone, just in general, uh, there's a book once written called The Death of the Mall. We take a look at mall statistics that are closing down, stores are going out. It's because 
more and more your consumers online, if you don't know how to relate to them, to work with them and to sell to them online, your competition who does, maybe who is offline, who, who's good at both, they're gonna outsell you. They're gonna outgrow you. They're gonna take the majority of the customers away and leave you in the dust. And then for the ones that are online, again, I think, personally, I think from working with businesses, they're really good at creating their product or service. They're really good at delivering that most of the time. The issue usually lies in they're not thinking about or focusing on or trying to improve their actual marketing and sales. They may even have like employees working on those things, but it just could be from their backgrounds or from where they came from. I'm not sure that they just don't have an outside view on what they do to optimize it and make it way more profitable. Usually it's follow-up. Usually it's the sales process. And sometimes they're running ads, but they don't really have like an actual enticing offer to really like, oh, this is really, really good. I, I need to buy this because offer is a, a huge aspect of business as well. Nice. My first thought was, oh my God, where do teenagers go if they don't go to the mall? <laughs> right, right. They, abandon they, them. <laughs> abandon them. I mean, I actually like going to the mall. My, me and my friends still go all the time, but yeah, if they're not going to the mall anymore, they're going to be online. They have to be. They're on their phones 24 seven, including myself, but usually, usually doing business, hopefully most of the time. <laughs> nice. So talk to me about the difference between selling a product. And I have this conversation all the time with people because it is totally different than selling online. You, when you have a physical product, you're like, Hey, this is the product you want this product, whatever it may be. Whereas online, one, you don't even need to have the product yet. And two, it's not about having the thing and letting the thing sell itself. You've got to sell it, is my take on the whole thing. So give me your opinion on all of that. <laughs> I, think, I think that's true. I, I think especially in person, it's much, much, much more consumer like driven as in like you have to truly like relate and build a, a, a real, real, real relationship with your customer. <laughs> online you kind of do that in your follow-up and working with them and then buying from you you know people like online products you buy but really in an offline business you have to have your customers loving you because that's really a lot of free advertising through word of mouth people don't know how much word of mouth generates you customers or buzz we just had a local restaurant open here it's a, it's a mexican restaurant services eh. food is eh. everything about it was eh. and in my opinion I'm sure their business will go down quite a bit over the next few months. You know, when a business first opens up, there's all the hype, all the buzz. They, business owners think that it's just going to keep selling like that. But unless you truly give your customers a genuinely really rewarding and good experience, that's really what it's about. You're not going to have them coming back again and again and again. And then I'm talking about you. For example, I've probably dissuaded customers from going there because of the people I've talked to, oh, did you go to a new Mexican restaurant? Well, it's kind of not good. And then they don't go. Um, so I think offline is just more impactful to be very personable and truly go above and beyond for customers. Well, the online world would benefit from that. It's just more difficult to really, really give that experience because it's not in person. There's nothing like in person. All right. So when somebody's got an online presence, um, let's assume that we're not talking anything selling on Amazon because it's a whole different kettle of fish. Let's right. assume you're driving traffic to their website and they have their thing. Are they creating that, ex that online experience with the company, with the product, with, you know, something else? How do, how do you see that all transpiring? I think mainly online, you have a few different mangles. You, you have to accomplish every customer. One, your product and service obviously must do above and beyond what it says. That will naturally drive growth because it's like a flywheel. People love your product and service because they love your product and service. They promote it, which drives in more people to buy the product and service, et cetera. But two, I think you also do it in, in over delivery of being thankful and supporting the customer. So for example, if I was selling even a, a, a physical product online, you know, after someone's buying, other than upselling and downselling and doing the things to optimize my business for myself, you need to optimize the customer experience. So if you're doing that, number one, you need a, you need a thank you follow-up email that goes, thank you so much, a personal message. You can even, especially if it's higher ticket, it's more profitable to do it too. Uh, reach out, have someone on your team reach out. Thank you so much for your purchase. De delivering, I, I have gel in my hair. From a certain company, I only buy a gel from. I, I forgot the name of the brand. Oh, Sucker, I believe it's Sucker Punch. Something Punch something for hair gel. The reason I buy from them, it's because 
through two or three purchases of buy my hair gel, they've given me a free comb or a free this or a free that. That's something that many businesses don't do is create and, and have something that's free. Have some extra bonus value you just give. It could be a wristband, it could be something very cheap that just gives a little extra. So one is this actually giving extra. Um, number two is customer support is ginormous. You know, having when a customer calls, knowing how to, how to handle complaints and still reward that person for reaching out is huge. Again, I never, when I first got started, believed in branding, but branding is, again, really important because it impacts how word of mouth spreads what people actually think about your industry. So I definitely think you need to optimize customer experience through just bonuses, extra gifts, delivering extra through support for the customer, through reaching out to them, and then just also educating them. So say, for example, you're selling uh, pomade for the hair and a, a comb. You should be sending them how-to videos on how to use it. Most people know how to use it, but some people don't. You, you never know. How-to videos. You can send them stories about how it was made. You need to get the customer involved with the product or service who they're actually interested, interested about it. And they can actually tell the story about it themselves. Um, it's like, think about why, why is Tesla so huge? In my mind, it's because the personality behind the brand and what they've craft, crafted in what they sell. You're not really buying a car with Tesla. You're buying a driving experience. Completely different thing. And that's what you want to do with your products. You want it to be a true customer-driven experience. Nice. I love that. And so give us an example of one of your Cinderella stories of one of your clients. Uh, there is a, for some reason I track ad creative teams. Ad creatives and agencies, I track a lot of, which I don't mind. I like working with them. Um, this was another ad creative company. I can't think of the name right now. Um, they have literally no follow-up in place. I mean, none. No emails. They didn't text their leads or as customers. They didn't call them. They did nothing. And I, I hear this quite, quite often. I don't know why, because you think people want more money for their business. You would uh, think. <laughs> you would think. So I completely revamped for them an entire follow-up series that's segmented to uh, leads that are active need to get more promotional or salesy messages. And it can be like that because it shows the leads are interested because they're clicking opening emails. Leads that aren't interested need to get different kinds of emails because they're not engaged. They're not really loving or wanting what you're offering. So I, I made a three different email series for each kind of lead they had based on the actions they were taking. So it's really good email segmentation. Um, and I just made sure that I, I kind of walked through a guide, like you need to text these people who buy, you need to thank them. You need to upsell them. You need to downsell them. You need to do as much as you can to deliver an experience like we're talking about um, and just follow up consistently as well. People think, especially with agencies, um, when people say no, like you get in a sales call with them, you go through an hour long call. They go, you know what? It's not right for me. Do you follow up with those people a month later, a week later, a day later to get those no's to turn to yeses because they already have talked to you. They, they still have the problem that hasn't been solved yet. Um, so I walked them through that, through buying, getting your people who said no to buy from you, which is huge, huge for profit, like increasing profits. Um, and they very quickly, it was like a 237 times, not times, 237% increased in um, book calls for them from lead, to, from audience to lead to lead to customer. Um, and they also increased the customer attention by like, I think it was by like four or five months because mm -hmm. now they were actually making sure that around the time, for example, this works good for agencies consulting, anything that's like a monthly service or monthly high ticket is around the time, you know, you have customer drop off at three months, five months, months, two years. That's when you should especially engage with them to increase customer retention. Um, so I walk them on how to do that as well. Again, to just creating a good customer experience, over delivering, especially with high ticket, when you can afford it a lot more. If you have like an agency client, if it's around, you have a point where they no longer stick and they drop off, you know, we don't work through as an agency. Six months, at five months, send them flowers, send them something physical, you know, really over deliver because again, then what you do is you build such a love and like for you, for you, for the for the brand, for the business that 
they just naturally want to keep working to you because you just, you just give, 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 give. Nice. I love that. So what are some of the stumbling blocks that somebody might be having right now? And they're thinking, oh my God, John, I need you so badly. One, number one, it, it usually, again, it comes back to these main things is one, people are afraid in follow-up. One, they are afraid they're going to follow up too much. Like uh, I just got off another consulting call with, with a couple um, that was also partially a podcast. They're amazing people. I, I just started after the call, you know, we chatted and stuff like we usually do a podcast. And I'm like, well, what do you do when they talk to me? I'm like, oh, I can help you with a bunch of this stuff. Um, what I work with them on is they're like, well, how often should we email? And people have the conception and businesses and brands have the conception that you're going to email too much. So they're like, well, I email once a week or I email, you know, every couple of weeks. But what you don't realize is when you're not emailing, when you're not texting, when you're not following up, all of the other businesses that are your competition are, and they're drawing your customers away. You have to be in your audience's eyes as much as possible. That's why the global brands are global brands because they have done branding correctly and they are seen everywhere, anywhere. If you're on Facebook, if you're on Twitter, if you're on your phone, if you're on YouTube, if you're in your, anywhere, they're being seen and that's what you want. So follow up minimal, minimal, I suggest at least every other day to every day. Like e through email marketing, through texting, it's a little bit different because it's more personal, direct on the phone, maybe once a week, it runs every three days to that. Um, and then also another thing that businesses get stuck on is they're, they're totally in promotion mode. When they follow up or they're working with, with, with their leads and trying to get them to buy, they're totally just sell, sell, sell. Maybe they'll offer some discounts and bonuses and stuff. But they're never like sending them how-to videos, walkthroughs, tutorials. They're never saying them the story of how the company got created. They're never saying them other things that will get the leading customer to actually relate with you. And again, build an actual experience and, and, and really relationship with you, with the brand, with the product, and make them want to buy. So one, follow up more, please. You are not going to bother them. And if you are going to bother them, they're probably not going to buy anyways. And even if you do bother someone through email, say like, ah, I'm getting too many emails from you. At least you're on their mind where before you didn't even show up. I'd rather bother my email list than that I don't even exist because at least a few are going to buy from you. Um, and two, you want to follow up again through email, through text and color, you name it, in a variety of perspectives and ways. So deliver value, offer you know tutorials, testimonials, use storytelling, use statistics, because in any audience, you need to relate to the different kinds of personality types. I'm very analytical. Um, and I love storytelling where maybe you're more emotional and analytical, you're more whatever. So you want to relate to these different kinds of people by not just selling, 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 have a variety of how you're speaking and communicating with these customers. I love it. That's awesome. So I know our listeners are going to want more from you. How did they start their journey with you? Um, I think mainly just follow me on YouTube. Free, free, free. I'm all give, give, give. Like I said, I love to work with people. I love to just deliver value to them, like genuinely go to youtube.com forward slash C forward slash John Weberg, or just look up John Weberg on YouTube, subscribe, follow me, learn from all my content too on social media, cute kitty, anywhere, <laughs> anywhere, just go and follow what I'm kind of teaching, preaching and giving out because in all my content I produce video format or any other format, it's just pure value. Here's how to optimize your business. Uh, your financials and your personal life, all these different things. I'm someone who just wants to help people and give to people. And the more people that kind of support, the more that it spreads out to, and that's just going to help people improve their businesses and lives. And that's really good stuff. Awesome. I love it. So yes, we will have all your links in the show notes and awesome. peeps, you know how to go and get the show notes. But if you happen to be just typing right now, it's J-O-N-W-E-B-E-R-G. So go check out John on YouTube and Weberg is W-E-B-E-R-G. Awesome. I love it. So I have to ask you, you gave us a little bit of the story and you hinted on it, but I want the rest of the story. So at what point did you know that you're a special kind of crazy enough to think that you could become an entrepreneur? Um, I, that is true. You have to be a little nuts. <laughs> it's one of the most difficult up and down journeys. It's often compared to like having kids because kids are always on your mind. Your children are always on your mind. Your business for most business owners is always there somewhere at the back of your mind. I think it was when I was around, when I 100% dedicated, 
Like I was, I was interested and I saw the lifestyle like you could have as an entrepreneur, entrepreneur, you know, travel lifestyle when I was between 13 and 15. But really when I was 18 years old, it's the guy who also I got this award from. Uh, from thank you, Joel Tyrion. Um, we're his number one affiliate in this whole company. At the time we were, I think, second or third for, uh, for a company called Now Lifestyle. We're affiliates for them. And what he did because we were on the top affiliates is we got sent on a fully paid for uh, seven day Cabo San Lucas vacation slash mastermind. It was mainly a vacation. That's what it really was. Uh, in this huge mansion that was on the mountainside that had an infinity pool that went to infinity or infinity hot tub that goes into an infinity pool that looked over the ocean. Nice. And where I came from, my background, you know, I've never seen a million dollar house when I was younger. That didn't exist in the town I lived in. That didn't even exist. You know, our cars, when we had them, were falling apart. Our doors were falling off the cars. And we didn't have a lot. So when I had that experience, it opened my mind, my mind to like, one, it was almost like fake. We were literally like, is this a real experience? Like, this is nuts. This is crazy. So it opened my mind to the possibility and like, also made me think, I want this. And I need this all the time. Although that would be, that would be great because we were served margaritas and other drinks and food, you name it. But it made me think like, this is possible and I want more of this. Even if it's taste, you know, I, I've spoken on stages and traveled much more. And I'm going to keep doing that. Hopefully launch my own event soon. I'm connecting some people together for it. But it made me just really want it because to this day, it was the best week of my life because it was so freeing. It was so incredible. It was a one of a kind. Where I come from, you know, people, most people will never even come close to experiencing what that was. Mm -hmm. um, it was just a mind blowing and it was, it was wonderful. I will go back to Cabo, uh, Villa Buena Vida, very soon. Nice. Love that. That's awesome. Joan, you have been amazing. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. I know how valuable it is. Any last words for our peeps? Two quotes. Uh, these are mine and they're original. Uh, Justin Timberlake's wife, I believe Jessica Beal, retweeted it once, but she retweeted without my name. I was really pissed. But uh, seriously, <laughs> uh, one is aspire for progress, hunger for success, and strive for greatness, which the meaning for that is clear. And the second one is your attitude is not defined by your life. Your life is defined by your attitude. Which simply means most people think that the outside world dictates how they feel, what they do, how they operate, why they're in the spot they are in the life. But in reality, it's how you think about things. It dictates how you react and what you do to make things better. Nice. I love it. That is awesome. Thank you, John, for being here with us today. Thank you as well. I appreciate it. Awesome. Peeps, this is Michelle Nedelec. Thank you for being here with us today. Be sure to subscribe to the show. And if you're looking to scale and automate your business, reach out to me at a, michelle at awarenessstrategies.com or of course, John at John Weberg on YouTube and connect with me on LinkedIn or Facebook. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you for listening to our show. I'm all about being a resource center for entrepreneurs to give them the information and the support that they need to make it in business. As such, the notes for this show can be found at our website at awarenessstrategies.com slash blog. Be sure to subscribe, give us a rating, I like five stars personally, and share with your friends.